Director of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we would be talking about a video which is Valuation Adjustment Liquidity Valuation Adjustment. At onset, I would like to wish you a wonderful new year. And uh, we again would like to tell you that we as a company planning to have more than 275 technical videos this year. And sitting today, we are very close to 500 videos. And hopefully in the next 10, 15 days, we would uh, able to meet the target, so target of 500 videos. And hopefully by 2018, when the sun will set for 2019, we would have approximately 750 technical videos on the cards. As you very well understand that valuation adjustment is a norm of the day. Today is 1st January 2018 and two days from now, which is 3rd January 2018, MIFID 2nd would be uh, would be live. MIFID 2nd would be applicable across the globe. MIFID 2nd would be touching all the derivative. And one of the two things which MIFID 2nd would have, of course there are multiple things which we have in MIFID 2nd is, uh, uh, is uh, predominantly pre trade analytics and post trade analytics in both of that either it's a pre trade analytics let me write here in both of that either it's a pre trade analytics or it's a post trade analytics Valuation is the key and one of the very important thing in the valuation is the credit is the valuation adjustment. We have huge amount of valuation adjustment right now which are as per Basel 3 and of course they are getting stringent in Basel 4. Like CVA credit valuation adjustment, DVA debit valuation adjustment, FVA funding valuation adjustment, LVA on which I am going to talking right now liquidity valuation adjustment, MVA Margin value valuation adjustment, KVA capital valuation adjustment, and COLVA oblique OIS, which is collateralized valuation adjustment. We are going to be covering this. Now, what exactly has happened in this? We just now had a word about immunization. And in the immunization, there are a lot of techniques which are happening which are being imparted by a bank. Now, one of the very important thing, either it's a repricing gap model, it's a maturity gap model, it's a duration model, or it's a leverage duration model. In all the four, the key for any bank is the risk sensitive asset minus the risk sensitive liabilities, that is the delta. Now, that is a different part that in either of the four models, sometimes you look at interest, sometimes you look at uh, weighted average uh, interest with respect to weighted average maturity. Sometimes you look at uh, only duration, modified Macaulay and all, and sometimes you look at basically, uh, you know, the leverage duration, duration with respect to leverage. But suppose, did we ever thought that there is something which, which, which would have exist here and here? I have an asset, say dollar one billion. And I have a liability dollar two billion. Now this asset is actually any of these asset in this world. If I'm talking about it could be foreign currency or it could be local currency. Similarly, the liability could be foreign currency or it could be the local currency. The foreign currency liability could only be two part, which is fixed. In our technical language, we never use the word fixed. We use fixed and we have float. The similar is fix and float. This categorization stand here and this categorization stand here. Now the moral of the story, I have a fixed liability which I wanted to convert into float or I have a float liability which I wanted to convert into fix. This is what banks are doing. Let's take an example. Treasury Consulting LLP is having a relationship with DBS India. What is DBS? Development Bank of Singapore India. It's an Indian part of, of uh, DBS Singapore. And of course our Singapore subsidiary would always uh, would also have a would also have a relationship with DBS Singapore. We have deposited a good amount of money with the blessings of Lord with DBS India. What do you think? All the corporates which have invested their money or they are keeping a float in the banks like Bank of America, City, Barclays, 
DBS, Standard Chartered, JP Morgan. Are these banks not making the money on that? Exactly not. They are making a money and that money is OIS, Overnight Index Swap. And this is where the liquidity valuation adjustment came. Liquidity valuation adjustment is actually a part of immunization but that is not pertaining to the delta. That pertains to the individual part. Because both the individual part could either be functional currency and local currency. And either it's a functional currency or local currency, it would be fixed on a float. Now, what LVA is, which is liquidity valuation adjustment, when a relevant bank would be paying LIBOR along with QSD, QSD stands for quality spread differential, and they would be receiving the OIS. Now that is conversion of fix to float. Sorry, my mistake. Float to fix. And LVA could also be when a bank would be receiving LIBOR, of course, they would be net off, it would be QSD, and they would be paying OIS. It means it is conversion of fix to float. The biggest challenge, let us take a practical case right now. Sitting today on 1st January 2018, it's a very first day of the new year when we are shooting the video. The one year LIBOR is actually take it 2%. And one year USD OIS is actually 2.4%. I'm damn sure that when the one year LIBOR is 2% and one year OIS is 2.4%, the banks which I'm quoting Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Standard Chartered, JP Morgan, they have trillions and trillions of dollars of asset. And their asset can easily be categorized into foreign currency and local currency. And the treasury department and the, or the trader must have taken a call whereby they could have either pay LIBOR or they would have received OIS or they would have received LIBOR, they would have paid OIS. This is something they are doing on a very frequent basis. And this is a part of, this is a part of immunization. You must be thinking why this is a valuation adjustment. Now let's, let me give you a small example. Let us take a bank Goldman Sachs, a bank which is known to all. And let us take the top American company, ExxonMobil. Assuming ExxonMobil deposited $2 billion with Goldman Sachs. And what is this $2 billion? Actually, this $2 billion is FD. Why? This is backed up with something which is known as CSA, Credit Support Annex. We are not going, going into detail of the CSA, but uh, on a very simplistic note, that assume that they have a single currency, single uh, collateral CSA. It's a single currency, single collateral CSA. Simple, very simple. Now, based upon that CSA, ExxonMobil is the largest petroleum company of this globe. They have huge amount of derivatives in this book. Across the globe, the derivatives are L1, level 1, level 2, level 3. ExxonMobil have majority derivatives of L2 and L3 and very limited derivative which, which they have which they have at L1. Basically the unobserv unobservable variable is something which is a cue, which is a key. The collateral which they have submitted and the derivative which they are taking there is a mismatch. And what is the mismatch? The mismatch is the unobservable variable which we have in L1, L2, L3. I know that most of the people don't be knowing about this, so let me give you a small example. In L1, you have 100% observable variable. In L2, you have 99% observable variable. It is 0% non-observable and it is at least 1% non-observable. And in L3, you have 0% observable and 100% non-observable. And ExxonMobil is here to stay. Now the moral of the story for ExxonMobil is that this CSA, $2 billion which they have invested with uh, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs would surely be taking a position in the banks. I am not, not here to commit what interest rate Goldman Sachs is offering. Assuming 
since it's an Excel mobile, the strategy function would be very strong. They are offering LIBOR plus 150 basis point. That is a fixed rate. That is a fixed rate. Oh, sorry, that is a floating rate. That floating would surely be converting into the fix by by Excel mobile. And that can only be possible doing using OIS or IRS. IRS is not possible here. Interest rate swap. The reason being Exxon Mobil is an American entity the functional currency dollar. We are talking about Goldman Sachs which have a functional currency dollar, deposit is in dollar, so this is something not possible. IRS is something which is not possible. The only thing is OIS. Now you must be thinking that if Goldman Sachs is paying LIBOR and they are receiving OIS, why they would be charging to Exxon Mobil? They are actually. The pricing of the derivative is they are giving to Exxon Mobil. They are assuming that what would if the bet go wrong? What would if there is a sudden hike in LIBOR, like a Trump is saying every day, FOMC is saying every day, Federal Open Market Committee, the Fed himself is saying every day, Fed Chair Powell is saying every day. What would if because of this, what would if because of this, there would be an issue in the market and that would lead to a loss in the books of Goldman Sachs. Do not forget that banks never pass the game to the client unless and otherwise client have a muscle power. But what would in case of loss? That forecasted loss would, or would always be debited from L2 and L3 derivative which Goldman Sachs is giving to Exxon Mobil. And if there would be a forecasting gain, Goldman Sachs will never talk about that. Because this is bank money, as simple as that. This is actually how it happens. Liquidity valuation adjustment is a key. ISDA is coming up with CDM model, common domain model, and there are a lot of changes which is happening in the CSA also, which is credit support next. Hopefully, tomorrow we would be covering a very wonderful video on ISDA. Now, these uh, things would have an impact on the strategies which the traders are taking in the banks. They would more often, not often, more often, would be converting from one currency to another or, or another currency to, to another currency. And because of that, a lot of fluctuation would have happened. In case that fluctuation would end up as a gain, bank will never talk about that. And in case it would end up as a loss, that would be charged from the banks, from the client books. And this is something which we have here, LVA. We are offering a lot of training programs and there are a lot of things which are happening and in fact our uh, fixed income platform is round the corner. In case you have any question, my mobile is 9899242978 while Skype ID is Rahul5327. My email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. My fixed income KPO number is 91114019774 and our website is www.treasuryconsulting.in. At the end, we wish you all a wonderful new year. And there are a lot of action which would happen from Treasury Consulting this year. Thank you and have a wonderful time at it.